This is Josiah Plays Deus Ex, Mankind Divided. By the way, there's also outfits, but I only have one outfit because I have all the DLC disabled. So there's a bunch of outfits that I would have if I had the DLC turned on, but I don't. Okay, here we go. Let's do this. Now, how do I, how do I go into super sneaky town mode? I wonder... F... Three... So there's my silent walking. Let's see how fast that drains the power. Ooh, I like the fact that it doesn't drain the power while I'm standing still. It only drains it when I'm actually moving. Of course, it does drain the shit out of it, doesn't it? Still on stay tuned screen. Thank you for telling me. Oops. You didn't miss anything. I didn't actually do anything. I didn't actually do anything. Here we are. Should be working now. Okay, I'm really glad uh, you, you mentioned that before I went on and did a bunch of cool shit and had to... Anyway, all I did was show the outfits thing and the fact that I only have one outfit to choose from because I don't have the DLCs. And then I and then I turned on my I turned this on and I was watching my energy bar. This is the thing that makes me walk silently. And I was watching how fast it drained the energy bar, then I turned it off. Let's just, let's check out the energy regen. How's the energy regen looking? Oh, regen's pretty quick. Well, I do have all the augs for it, so Still, let's be super sneaky. By super sneaky, I mean obviously grabbing things and throwing them around. How come nothing is highlighted like in the first game? I kind of liked it when things were highlighted and, and I knew exactly what I could pick up and interact with. The trash can. Man, you can really pick up everything in this game. Well, obviously not those cinder blocks right there. Augment oh, this is a dead body. Holy shit. Credit chip. 37 credits, baby. Trying to jump up on some shit. There'll be a lot of time wasted doing stuff like this in this playthrough. <laughs> <laughs> trying to jump up on things for absolutely no reason other than the fact wait I was in crouch mode come on let me up there for fine forget it forget it cardboard boxes augmented construction worker doesn't have anything. What the hell happened to this guy? He's like all messed up. There's a bunch of blood on the wall right here. Apparently I can't pick up a towel. Or blanket. He has an implanted towel? Yeah, he has the uh, famous towel log. Man, when you switch to... What's this? Change control scheme. Yeah, okay, thanks. I'm good for now. What when you when you switch to smart vision, it does that little staticky thing. I don't like that very much. Ooh. Wait, is it possible to turn on highlightings? Highlightings? Highlights? Because I like those things being highlighted so I know so I can see them from kind of like far away and know that I'm supposed to mess with them um, no this isn't the section this is the section where I have all my graphics turned way down to play in like super scrub mode cover prompts cover to cover line interaction prompts objective locators I don't like objective locators reticle oh I like a reticle though hit confirmation Damage indicator. Pick up outline. Yes, that's what I was looking for. Just like in the first game. 
Uh, this all looks fine. Health bar, energy bar, ammo counter, weapon bar. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. There, the, there we have the little outlines. Okay, good. Control the crouch. I like those. I like seeing at a glance. That's new. That little tiny animation showing his hands pulling him up when you jump up on things. They didn't have that in the first game. You just kind of jumped up on things before. Alright, I guess I should go check this out because obviously when you open up any kind of grate, you have to go in there. Because grates are great. Hyperactive puppy augment in effect, jumping up on everything. Man, I jump up on some shit in this game. You'll see. There'll be so much jumping up on stuff for no reason. Do you know what the SF M religion is? I don't think so. FSM? Doesn't sound familiar. What does the FSM stand for? Maybe I would know if you told me that. There's another dead person with some credits. Ooh, 107. Triangle code. Wait a minute. Did I just find some sort of collectible? Use the Deus Ex Universe phone app to scan this triangle code. I don't have that. Apparently that's for like developer commentaries and stuff. So maybe that's a developer commentary thing I just found. And if you have the phone app, you can... I mean, that's kind of cool, but... Alright, that's all that was in here. Sorry, buddy. I just had to throw you just to see if I could. Pastafarianism, the flying spaghetti monster. Oh, I've heard, I've heard of that. Yeah, I thought it was just a joke, though, not like a real religion. I'm up on this shit. How do I go into cover, like this? Cover does not work the same way it does in the first game. Not at all. I thought I turned a reticule on. But I clearly do not have a reticle. Hmm. Poland recognizes it as a religion? Oh, well then, in that case, it must be legit. <laughs> Alright, let's quit fucking around here. I wonder if I have more than one sa quick slave slot. Nope, just one. Good to know. Right, now the vent covers are um, highlighted. That's what I needed in my life. We're already crawling through vents. Oh, you gotta punch some vent covers and upgrade from the first game. You weren't allowed to destroy vent covers before. Getting fancy now. Traffic cones. I always jump up on things because I always think I'm going to find hidden shit if I jump up on things. Or be able to see, you know, like something cool from... And once in a while, that's actually true. Once in a while, it's actually true. Hey, there's another dead body right there. Adam's hair is looking a little bit spiky there. Wait. 
but I wanna... What is that? Pocket Secretary, oh yeah, it's time! Reading! Ooh! Pocket Secretaries look way cooler in this one than in the first game. Yeah, maybe long-range scoped weapons don't get reticles. That, yeah, that could be the case, Saito. Kwasim Mir from Kalim Kuri. Everyone has gone crazy. I was working on the fan system when we lost power. Stuck in here. But I think that means they can't get at me. They're killing everyone. They started screaming and attacking anything that moved. Where are you? If you can, make it up to the storage area on the roof. It's caged in, so you should be safe there. Might even have some medical supplies. Door code is 4801. Be safe, friend. Ah, yes. Giving out door codes to everything. It begins. Can I just like... Hop! Oh, yes. The answer is yes. Okay. Still don't see any bad guys. It will not let me jump over things to my death. Good to know. Get out, get out of the way, heavy plastic case. Get out of here, plastic case. I'm being super sneaky right now. But I don't see any people. Space to vault over. That's pretty cool. Oh, a medical box. Another hypo stem injector. That guy's got nothing on him. I'm up on your porta potty. Yep. Press space to jump. Man, I know. Throwable hands up. Hold space and move forward to grab a higher ledge. Oh. Got it. Say what you will about Darrow, but even without his video being released, he's pretty handily managed to throw the spanner in augmentation. What? Are you making this up, Boss Pie? Because that does not sound like a real thing. What you're saying right there. That they actually say ramen, like ramen amen. Th that's fucking ridiculous. Like, I am all about letting people uh, have their faith and practice their religion how they wish, but that's, that's, that's ridiculous. Oops. I like that I can kind of catch myself. Oh, hey now. Credit ship, some absinthe. Absinthe. Triangle codes. They've been hidden around the game. Scan them using your phone. Texas exclusive content. But it's not in game content. It's just. Oh, I see how the DLC goes.
Got some absinthe. Wow, look at that bottle. Tyson Sense. That is a fucked up looking bottle right there. They opened up a whole new world of climbing up on shit. I know, right? Flying spaghetti monster. Well, hey. If it makes people happy, that's all that matters, I guess. Absinthe has had a bad rap, man. Hallucinations? Big deal. Addiction? Come on. Indolence? Dude, you can't keep a good fairy down. To paraphrase a well-known idiot, uh, idiom, absence makes the heart grow... Ah, uh, never mind. Hand me that spoon. Used to recover a fair amount of health at the cost of blurry vision. Alright, so it works the same way as in the last game. If I'm playing this game correctly, the way I want to play it, I shouldn't really ever be taking damage anyway. Get up there. Get up there. You won't let me. You won't let me. Get up there. No. Alright, 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 I get it. I get it. I'm not allowed to go that way. I get it. I don't know what Russell's teapot is. Man, I'm kind of sad about having to play this on the current graphic settings. It looks rough. Smart vision highlights elements you can interact with. Oh, there's a breakable wall. Oh, I see. I have to have smart vision on to detect the breakable walls now. Get out of here, box. Get out of here, box. I mean, I can see the cracks in the wall, but that could just be decorative, you know what I'm saying? Oh, there's some bad guys. I finally see some bad guys. I like finding credit chips a whole lot. <laughs> More credits. All right, so I have to break through that wall. It doesn't look like there's any other way to go. They are so going to take all these Augs away from me. I already know they are. They, they wouldn't have started you off with like two-thirds of the Augs already unlocked. That was cool. Quick inventory. Access items on the fly. Okay. Yeah, I've already done that. So there's a couple of assholes over there. The F5-ing is gonna happen. Wait, hold on. Basically, 
It's an argument against the burden of veracity being on those needing to dis disprove a statement rather than one prove a statement. The argument goes, you can say there is a teapot invisible to our scanners orbiting between the sun and earth. However, the burden of proof is on you providing evidence for such a claim rather than others disproving it. The Pastafarian conception of heaven includes a beer volcano and a stripper or sometimes prostitute factory. The Prostafarian hell is similar except that the beer is stale and the strippers have sexually transmitted diseases. Wow. Okay. Well, that's... Well, I mean, in my opinion, if you can't prove something one way or the other, then you can't really make any definitive statements about that thing. All you could really say is, we don't know whether or not there's an invisible teapot between the Earth and the Sun. We have no proof that there is or isn't. So, it's certainly possible, but it's not, it's not known, there's no evidence of it, so we can't say that there is one. They like to hide things under other things, but I am not fucking fooled. You're not gonna hide stuff from me under other things. Hey, what? Um. Yep. Pathfinder, motherfucker. Oops. Shit. Path fucker upper, motherfucker. Okay, hold on. Hey, wait a minute. Why is my battery power down? I already know there's nothing, like, over this way. Like, I already literally know that, but I'm kind of obsessive about checking places like that, just to make sure. Because every once in a while you go somewhere like that and you get a little hidden thing. That's exactly why atheism is, despite claims to the contrary religion, because it makes a definitive statement. Yeah, I agree. I agree, actually. I I've even said that before. That atheism is also a religion. The only thing that seems like really reasonable and non-religious to me is to be an agnostic. To say, I don't know on the question of God. Because nobody can argue with I don't know. You don't have to prove I don't know. <laughs> hmm. If I jump down here. Let's turn on my stealth thing. I forgot how to do it. Make that super silent, except for Adam going Hoo! That That part's not so silent. Ooh, what does this do? Uh-oh, those guys are right there. Oh, a biocell. Thank you. What did I just do? I don't think they know I'm here yet. Oh, I just turned on electricity. I don't have the shielding, do I? Nah, no, EMP shielding's right here and I don't have it. So that will probably hurt me. I mean, it will definitely hurt me. Why the fuck would I want to turn this on? Like, hey, I haven't taken damage yet, I'd sure love to. How can I activate this electricity so that it'll fuck me up? We hold these moves to be self-evident, Naxmu. Wait, 
wait a minute. This is the room I was just in. What the fuck was the point of that? Seriously. What was the point of that? Alright, so it electrifies this, but maybe... It also turns something else on that I actually need. So we're gonna fucking turn this thing on. We're gonna turn on the lightning. And we're gonna get out of here this way. Maybe. Assuming that that did something useful for us. Because, I mean, otherwise, what's the point of being able to creep over there and turn that thing on? Unless there's some usefulness to it. Wait a minute. Was this light on before? Hmm. Restore power to the keypad. Ah! I had to restore power to the keypad. My route through the building has been blocked by electronically operated doors. Problem is, there's no power. I need to find a way to restore it so I can use the keypad that opens them. Better search the area. That's what it was for. Got it. Let's put this away. It's a quick save. Am I going to have to do some uh, sneaky sneaky hacking right now? Hacking network info. Security rating 1. Temps left five. That doesn't sound that hard. Use the mouse to navigate between nodes. So is this just like the set the system from the first game, but with fancier graphics? I.O. port. Your entry point. If the security system manages to take it over, you will be booted from the system. If discovered, the time until then will be listed on screen. Okay, that's like in the first game. Registry, your goal. Capture every registry node on the grid to complete the hacking challenge. Some grids can have more than one registry. Directory, access points on the grid. Hack them to move throughout the map towards the registries. Bridge, data connections. Bridges that connect nodes together and determine in which direction data travels. Full lines represent bridges that allow travel in both directions. Dotted lines and arrows indicate its only direction. Okay, so all of this is just like the first game so far. Data store. Contains rewards to unlock, such as credits, XP, or software that can be used for challenges. However, you'll only gain these prizes if you complete the hacking challenge. Just like the first game. API. Node modifiers. Spam. Docks the rating of subroutines by one, increasing tracing time. Transfer. Transfers two rating points from adjacent nodes. Clearance. Lowers the rating of data stores by two. Again, all just like the first game. Oh yeah, no, I always do too, Saito. I hack everything even if I have the code. Always hack everything. I'll hack alarm panels that aren't even alarm that aren't even going off for no reason. Just because you can get credits and experience points and and stuff um, from the hacking. The game did give a code before, but I don't know if it was to these doors. Diagnostic subroutine. Grid defense system. It will start a tracing signal if you are detected. The amount of time before it seizes the I.O. port and forces the user out is dependent on the path the subroutines takes to reach the port. These remain dormant until discovered. Firewall. Now this is different. This is different. This is new. Bridge trip mines. Subsystems of the diagnostic hidden on the midpoint of bridges. Crossing them without stealth software triggers the firewall mine, alerts the diagnostic subroutine, and locks user progression for several seconds. Okay, those are new. Everything else is exactly like the first game. The graphics just look different. Kind of fancier, a little bit more Tron-like, or, or like the kind of graphic, like the kind of uh, images from like old Shadowrun or Cyberpunk RPG books. Okay, so, IO port, I can click it, I can fortify. I can go directory, capture detection, 90%. How do I scroll around in here? All right, so I can't do anything special in here. There's no data stores. So basically, I'm just going for this. Oh, I'm going to have to go up this way. All right, go. Capture, 
fortify. Trace program initiated. This is much cooler seeming than the first game, even though it's actually exactly the same. Access granted. All right, that was very, very, very easy. Did I get some XP? Yeah, 25. You give me the ha wait. Seriously, you give me the hacking tutorial after I've hacked something? Didn't that go the other way around? All right, all right, I got it. I understand how hacking works. It's just like the first game, with perhaps maybe a couple small changes. Cover tutorial. Tutorial mode. Follow the green holograms to receive tutorial instructions about various game mechanics. Experiment without any consequences. You can reset or exit at any time. Cover possibilities. Learn about moving to cover, cover swapping, rounding corners, vaulting over cover, and transitioning from cover to first person view. Clicking on cover possibilities doesn't do anything. Alright, let's try tutorial mode. Whoa. Whoa. Tutorial mode is crazy. Green hologram, press F to take cover. Aim at the cover next to the green hologram. Oh, I like this cover to cover. This is like in the this is like in the division. I loved the cover to cover in the division. Let's see if this cover to cover is as cool. Yeah, it looks like it pretty much works the same way. Nope, hold on. No, oh, how do I... Oh, I don't hold it, I just press it, okay. Hold the movement key in the direction of the green hologram with a space to roll from cover to cover. Hold space to round the corner. That's like in the first game. Aim at the next cover and press space to vault over. Nice. Aim at the next one and press space to run out of cover and back into first person. Tutorial completed. I... I don't think I need to try it again. Alright. Cover tutorial. If you put something hard between you and other things, it makes it harder for them to hit you. It is a difficult concept. It is. So we just have that one guy, right? Alright, we're about to have a taking a motherfucker the fuck down tutorial up here in a second. Oh, I can take him down from behind the cover? This is awesome! Alright, hold on. I really want to see the arm blade kill real quick. Oh, take it, motherfucker! Takedowns have an energy cost. They're not available if the minimum energy threshold is not full. Lethal takedowns are more noisy and run a higher risk of creating disturbances, but they can completely neutralize an NPC. Non-lethal takedowns are less noisy, so the risk for disturbance is lower. However, NPCs can eventually be woken up by allies. Alright, hold on. Oh, Duncan McCready, or Mac as he is sometimes called, is a tough-as-nails special forces operative working for TF-29. He heads up the Prague Division's elite tactical squad. Mac has no patience for the incompetent, which to him is almost everyone. His cynical personality and bias against the augmented make him tough to like, but his military experience and no-nonsense approach in the field have earned him great respect. He seems pretty intense. <gasps> no! You will die here! 
No, no, that's not what was supposed to happen. I pressed spacebar to end the loading screen, not to... No. All right, let's just knock him out. Nighty night, motherfucker. Nighty night. Ooh, who's this guy? I wonder how far away I can see him with this. Pretty far. You're not gonna fool me, garbage bins. In before that guy comes back and sees me in a second. Box. Box is going crazy. We got some physics nonsense happening. Whoop. 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 I think he saw me. Did he? I don't know. I don't feel good about that. It'd be great if just before Jensen went to take the guy down, all of a sudden his vision was obscured by a tutorial. <laughs> it also seems to have had some difficulty with shaving. Just tell him that you're the janitor. I, I think what the game is trying to tell me is there's nothing over here of any of any interest. That's what it's trying to tell me, but I'm not sure that I'm fooled. To be perfectly honest with you, I am not fooled. That guy's... Maybe he can't see this far. Because, you know, I am awfully far away. Everything be tripping over here. Ooh, what I just get? Some painkillers. A single dose of analgesic drugs that increases the health bar. Use can increase health beyond the normal maximum. Multiple uses stack. Well, whose prescription is this? Doesn't say. It's got a prescription number. <laughs> the actual prescription has increased health bar by 25% per bottle written on it. That would be hilarious if I got a prescription that said that. Alright, cool, cool. Looks like I used up an amount of my energy that is problematic because it won't regenerate past that point. I wonder what the minimum regeneration is. Go away, man. Pistol ammo. Hmm. Paint bucket. Oops. Super stealth. The guys come in. 
Guy's coming back. I can see him on my mini-map up there. I can see his gigantic vision cone. But he can't see me because I'm too sneak. Hmm. Oh, hello. So I can go that way. Oh, also, this guy. Oh, uh, the 10 millimeter pistol, my favorite weapon from the other game. Alright, so we've got blue dot machine pistol ammo, 123 grain pistol ammunition, 9 millimeter parabellum rimless cartridge. A carton of 9x19mm rimless bullets, designed with added recoil restraint and over-penetration control, because you do hate some over-penetration. For use in rapid-fire machine pistol type firearms, regular bullets are the most common type of ammunition. They are used to deal damage to enemies, but are weak against armor and robots. And then we got some nice pistol regular ammo. Oh uh, yeah, the old Brass Royals. Gotta love them. 10 millimeter auto ammunition. By Kaiga. Warning. These can cause you to die if shot at you with a gun. So watch out for that. Box of 10 by 25 millimeter, 155 grain, high performance round, specially designed to deliver stopping power and negligible drop or rise above point of, point of aim when deployed by a 10 millimeter pistol. Those sound pretty good. Their damage capacity can be negated by armor. Okay. And then we've got the beautiful 10 millimeter pistol. Customize this bad boy. Ooh, you can modify the pistol to go full auto. EMP ammo? That sounds awesome. Can't, can't wait to get a silencer for this thing. That's when it gets awesome. Oh, I see. I see how this works. You get parts to upgrade your guns instead of just have finding upgrades, like finding a damage upgrade laying around and putting it on your gun. Instead, you get these parts and you use them to put whatever upgrades you want on it. Steiner Bisley's CA4 10mm is an updated version of the popular Zenith 10mm. As lightweight as its predecessor, the semi-automatic CA4 is even more versatile, making it as popular in the boardroom as it is in the bedroom. No, wait, as it is in the, in the alley. Why would you be shooting people in the boardroom? I mean, besides the obvious reasons <laughs> why you'd want to shoot people in a boardroom. It still offers the same quick rate of fire, average ammunition capacity, standard reload time, and regular damage capability. It fires 10 by 25 millimeter ammunition. Specification upgrades are possible if weapon parts are available. That's a beautiful gun. It's a beautiful gun. Love it. <laughs> in the bedroom. Ed209 needs a pretext to shoot you. You have 30 seconds to comply. Alright, hold him, hold him up. Hold him up. That goes on number two now. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, come back over here, Pally. I'm gonna take this guy out by hand. I don't know what he's saying. Is he speaking Arabic? Is he speaking Farsi? I don't know what he's speaking, and I don't know how to speak it. You're going down, 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 you're going down! Nice. 
Energy. Activation costs. Certain augmentations have an activation cost which degrades the energy meter's maximum regeneration. The wide part of the energy meter left is unaffected by degradation and will always regenerate. Ah, just like you said, Saito. Yeah, I like how it shows the path you travel if you do cover switch too, yeah. It's very cool. It's like the Division. Oh man, the Division was such a fun game. To refill the energy meter and reset the maximum regeneration fully, the use of a biocell is required. Huh? Fuck, fuck, fuck. Oh. Alright, hold on. Unacceptable. Who the fuck is Jim Miller? Three levels of NPC awareness. White means they see you but don't care. Yellow means they're trying to find you. Red means it's time for you to run or fight. Jim Miller... ...is the director of Task Force 29 Central European D Division. This is the guy that was in the helicopter giving the briefing, right? An expert marksman and former member of Australia's SAS, he leads a combined team of intelligence gathering analysts and tactical assault responders from a concealed office in Prague. A direct and decisive leader, Miller is committed to his job and passionate about protecting civilians, but remains intensely private about his life outside the agency. No! Stop that. So, can I not get this guy in... I'm gonna have to, um... No, I didn't have time for sneaking up. I had to... No, I ain't got time for this tutorial right now. Come on. Come on. There we go. Alright, I can turn my sneaky running off now. Machine pistol ammo. Alright, now that we dealt with that dude... Just one guy over there, right? I wish I knew how much energy bar it takes to do the takedown. You like how men in the future basically just dress like they do now, but with more turtlenecks? Calm your shit, sir. Calm your shit. Calm your shit, sir. Calm your shit. Have you considered calming your shit? Calm your shit, sir. Calm your shit. I could activate my cloaking just to roll up on him and, and fucking take him out, but I don't know if that will drain so much energy that I'm no longer able to, uh... Some more ammo. More ammo for picking up the pistol, that's how it worked in the first game as well. Do I want a machine pistol? Machine pistol can use EMP ammo. It can do full auto. Wait. Oh, it, it only does burst fire right now, not full auto. Well, that's kind of lame. Alright, we've learned about takedowns already. Pretty cool looking machine pistol, though. Stasiuk Arms. Looks like it takes exactly as much as the minimum power level. Yeah, that's kind of what I figured. Beloved by gangbangers everywhere, but also the choice of special ops agents and tank crews, 
The machine pistol is a smaller variant in the submachine type class of weapons. I never like submachine guns in games. I just don't. I either like full-on assault rifles or just like pistols. Well, sniper rifles. Sniper rifles and silenced pistols are generally my favorite. But if I want to fire something with auto fire, I generally like full-on assault rifles, not like submachine guns. You like how it can recharge above the level by half the amount you use at a given time? I don't quite know what that means. Lightweight and sporting a good ammunition capacity, the Hurricane TMP-18 hurls ammo bursts. It hurls them at a devastating rate of fire. Well, actually, it just fires bursts, unless you upgrade it, but whatever. Its positive traits are generally balanced by its negatives. The weapon is less precise than larger and more stable firearms, and its rapid rate of fire means ammo is quickly depleted. Specification upgrades are possible if weapons parts are available. It fires 9x19mm caliber rounds. Yeah. I don't really like it. I, get, I do get a reticle with this, though. Actually, this gun feels kind of good. How long does the quick loading actually take? It's pretty fast, isn't it? Yeah, it's fast. Okay, good. Because I'm going to quick load a fuckload in this game. You can believe that. Probably won't use the machine pistol, though. You recharge above the minimum level, though, it can only do so to about the halfway point of what you use. So if you use the X energy, you can recharge up to 0.5 X. Hmm. Okay. I wish they'd showed us discrete energy cells like in the first game, honestly. I don't like this bar very much. The discrete energy cells made it extremely easy to know if you had enough energy to do a certain thing. Whereas... Man, there's lots of little hidden paths and stuff. I mean, it doesn't surprise me given that it's a Deus Ex game, but... Oh, shit fuck. Hey, wait a minute. Where am I? This is the first room, right? Yeah, okay, and I can come over this way. Let's just put this bad boy away. I'm also gonna hoard my stuff like crazy. Like, I'll try not to ever use, uh, use any ammo if I don't have to. I'll try not to ever use energy cells if I don't have to. Try not to ever use anything. So... I'll end up carrying way too much stuff around, won't be able to carry everything, and at, by the end of the game I'll have ludicrous amounts of ammo and energy cells and everything, way more than I'll ever need because I refuse to use it throughout the game. I can tell you, I can pretty much already predict that's exactly how things are going to go down. Alright. I'll spend so much time jumping up on random things as well. I've already told you that, but I just have to reiterate. Re 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 whoa, that word just got away from me. I have to reiterate it here because people might have think thought of. I suddenly can't speak at all. Hey, can I take that tape? Because that looks useful. I suddenly might think that I was kidding before, and I most certainly was not. <laughs> Oh, there's a... I'm trying to jump up there all crazy. There's a ladder right here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What's up, Toolbox? What's up, Toolbox? <sighs> Number of things I pick up and throw for no reason will also be very high. You're also obsessive about not killing one. Well, I did it non-lethal in the first my first playthrough. 
of Deus Ex, except for bosses which you had to kill. You literally had no choice. More credits. But I did it I did it non-lethal other than that. But I had a lot more fun in the second game. Man, sneaking around and headshotting people with a silenced pistol is really, really fucking fun. So I enjoyed that so much that I figured, you know, there may have to be some of that. You know, I'll be non-lethal, like, on any given mission. I'll either be non-lethal or I won't. And if I'm non-lethal on a mission, then I will absolutely stick to non-lethal. Maybe I'll do non-lethal the whole game. I don't know. Right now, so far, I'm all non-lethal. It's also kind of fun using the arm blades on dudes sometimes as well. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you gotta arm blade some guys. Ah, there's an elevator. Alright, I'm gonna find all the stuff, though. Like, I will find all the stuff. I will pick up random things and throw them around. Get out of the way, paint bucket. No. Thought there was gonna be something there. I did. And these augmented construction workers got fucked up. They did not have a good time. I see something. There's still ammo. Pistol even loaded? Let's load the pistol just in case. You'd think with someone with blades in their arms that Jensen would be more clean shaved. If any guard came in and saw you hopping about like that, I can just imagine how they'd react. Well, I mean, they'd react by shooting me, but yeah, they'd have a moment though of, of like, what the fuck. <gasps> Ooh! I love these in the first game. These, these like, e-newspaper things. We found one. Pikus Daily Standard. Eliza Kassan, every day. And we found out in the first game that Eliza is actually just a complicated AI. She's not even a person. Well, she could be considered a person in some sense, I guess, but she's not a human being. Tehran welcomes UN representative. Tehran, top story. Hanoko Sato, you in special envoy to the augmented. Special envoy to the augmented, huh? That's a thing, I guess. Arrived to tour the Middle East today. Almost two full years after rampaging augmented workers laid waste to many of the re region's most populated cities. They're just going to keep bringing that up, aren't they? They just can't stop bringing up the uh, augmented workers going nuts and killing everyone thing. Violence by and against the augmented has increased their situations and better understood why once prosperous cities like Dubai have yet to fully recover. Hopefully, she told reporters gathered at the tarmac. Oh, that's why it didn't make sense. Because I have to scroll down. Okay, hold up. Violence by and against the augmented has increased worldwide since the incident, leaving struggling local authorities ill-equipped to handle it. Ms. Sato plans to visit as many devastated Arab nations as she can during her stay to assess their situations and better understand why once prosperous cities like Dubai have yet to fully recover. Yeah, check your non awk privilege. Check your Natch privilege. 
Hopefully, she told reporters gathered at the tarmac, the report I submit to the UN at the end of this journey will enable Security Council members to reach a wise, well-reasoned, and unanimous decision as they debate drastic steps to curtail the global violence. Doesn't have to feel like you're a broken machine. H2O boost. Enhanced water. Special water for augs. Wait a minute. I just clicked on that and something's happening. I mean, more specifically, nothing is happening. When I clicked on that, it, um... Made my mouse cursor vanish. But it didn't do anything else. Omar Chubb versus Bobby Butch. Heavy Metal Fighting Championship. Oh man, augmented fighting seems like it would be just lethal. Papa Cola Soft Drink. Brown reassures investors. Oman Editorial. Billionaire business mogul Nathaniel Brown admitted that extreme weather conditions have delayed construction of Rabia, the glittering 3D printed city being built in Oman for augs. Yet he told shareholders not to worry. We only need a few more enlightened investors backing us to put Rabia back on course. So is this guy the new Taggart or Darrow of this game? And is this Rabia the new place? Is this the new Panchea? I don't know. We'll find out. All right, cool. We read a newspaper, which makes me happy. I'll throw a box. Oh, look at that. I bounced it and got it up there. Man, I'd like to say I did that on purpose, but um, I didn't. Interesting that throwing heavy boxes doesn't seem to use up energy anymore. It did in the first game. Like, this is clearly a heavy box. It even says heavy plastic bin. And when I... When I grab it and toss it. It doesn't uh, use any of my energy. Okay, cool. Well, we'll consider continue exploring this room and uh, going through here and maybe actually do the objectives of our mission at some point in our next episode. That's going to do it for this one. So thank you for watching. This has been Josiah Plays Deus Ex Mankind Divided.